Hi, it's Melinda from Alexis and Melinda's Art Space. Coming um, today, tonight, this afternoon, whenever you're watching this, for me it's um, 11 o'clock at night. So forgive me if I'm a bit uh, silly. <laughs> it's late. So coming at you with an art journal page today for February Mission Inspiration. Now I am doing this voiceover nearly at the end of March and this may not even go live till April so I don't know when I'm going to schedule it but I did do it in February. It's just I'm finding the editing um, is just kicking my bottom at the moment. It's just not happening. Um, I tend to do it in slabs and I'll tend to get um, 10 to 12 videos done at one stage and then I won't do anything for three weeks because I've scheduled that many videos and then I go, oh, I've got to do videos again. I've got to edit them. I film lots, but I don't. And um, the last three weeks I've had a really sore foot, so I've been sitting on my butt doing not much, which is probably good for videos, but I just, with the pain in my foot, I just didn't want to do voiceovers because, well, you didn't want to hear me ranting over about my foot. It's a little better at the moment. It's still giving me lots of grief, stupid thing. Who invented joints and feet? So Mission Inspiration, if you haven't heard about it, I do do it nearly every month on my channel. So for a lot of our new subbies that have come on board the last um, month or so before uh, before I've posted one of these, it's an eight-step challenge that Mike Deacon puts up every month. And he has a Facebook group as well, so I will link that down below and I'll link his YouTube channel as well. And basically it's an eight steps, I call it a recipe for scrap, uh, for, not scrapbooking, see I can't talk tonight, a recipe for art journaling. So you follow the steps and you can interpret them, literally you can interpret, interpret them. Oh my god, interpret them. I can't talk, you see this is why I shouldn't do voiceovers at 11 o'clock at night. You can interpret the steps any way you like them. Or substitute them if you don't have the exact um, material needed. But a lot of them are very, very general. So they come with a colour scheme, um, a brown, red or orange was this month, um, but you can follow it or not follow it. And it was industrial, mechanical, whimsical, revolutionary and futuristic were the five sort of prompt words. Again, you can use those or not use those. It's the eight steps that you have to use. So the first one was covered with tissue paper or newsprint. And look, the magic, magic, I'm finished with all my gas bagging. <laughs> I'm finished. So this newsprint is actually what florists use sometimes to wrap around flowers. I got a whole big bunch of it from um, overseas, an overseas website. That one that we don't mention that often on YouTube anymore. If you don't know what I'm talking about, comment below and I'll shoot you a um, private message. Um, so just gluing that down with liquid, um, liquid text matte medium or gel medium, gel medium that was. Um, and just giving it a dry with the heat tool and now just trimming off the edges. You get a sneak peek of another art journal page. So working in my altered book, so it already had text on the page, but I do like to start with some collage papers. It's beneficial. It does strengthen the papers, even though this book's from about the 70s, so the paper in it's really, really nice, um, nice and thick. But I do like to start with a collage background. So the second step was a thin colour spritz with ink or colour. I have written these down in shorthand. So bear with me a minute while I interpret. Sorry, I just had to tend to some... Um, doors and windows it started raining here so if you hear a funny noise i do have a um, tin roof and when it rains really loud it gets really loud in here so with some spray ink and i decided to blot it on my journal because there was way too much ink on there um so that's what i was doing with the second journal i often do that and just on a spare page blot it with some color so just drying that with the heat tool didn't want to cover up the lot of it, just wanting to give it a bit of um, bit of colour. And it's a green ink spray, I don't even know where it's from, um, it's quite old. And I add a bit of water so it flows a bit nicer as well. So that was step two, again just pushing my journal, oh, actually that's some, um, some drop paper onto the top just to soak a bit of the ink up and that gives it a bit of texture too. So drying it off again, 
So I do that for a few layers. Step three is tinted texture paste through a stencil. So it could be a bought stencil, it could be a homemade stencil. It can you can sort of interpret the the steps as much as you like. So I decided to, as it said, tinted. Um, I decided to add some paint to my texture paste. No, I don't. I decided to add some of this Montmark. It's like a gelato, but it wasn't really getting the colour I wanted and didn't work real well. So I think I do end up adding some paint. Because I'm looking at my face now and it is grey where I'm looking and I'm adding brown. So, Oh, no, I add ink. Okay, I did this quite a while ago. So I add some ink that's um, Bombay uh, Indian ink. So I add that to the white texture paste. And because you're adding it to a white texture paste, it does dull down the colour and fade out the colour. Obviously, the black went to grey, um, but that colour I still wanted to use. So to apply my texture paste, I do do it with a credit card. It's, I just find that easier. Sometimes I do it with a palette knife. So this is one of my stencils from my store. It's one of our multi-cogs. If it's not on my website, it'll be there soon. I do need to do um, a huge update on my website. I just Finding the hours in the day is ridiculous at the moment. I'm just too busy doing nothing, basically. <laughs> the only thing you've got to do with the stenciling and the texture paste is wash your stencil and your, obviously, my little credit card or room gift card quite quickly after you have used the texture paste because it does dry like cement so it will ruin your stencil if it is on if it does dry on your stencil so just scraping bits around as well the page because I'm working in my altered um, art journal does get a bit buckled so going back to that page I wiped some of the ink onto and just scraping the rest of the tinted texture paste so I don't um, waste it so that's a starter of a page I'll go and work on. Not sure whether I've done anything on that page or not. As I said, this is a while ago. And that's in my other journal. I have quite a few journals on the go. For this particular reason that I like to add excess stuff to a second journal while I am working my first one. But I have, basically I have too many on the go at the moment. <laughs> so the texture paint goes on quite thick so it does take quite a while to dry. So get a good heat blast or... Uh, be patient and wait. Go make yourself a cup of coffee and come back. And then it will be dry. So step four was colour, string or twine and add to page. Sometimes these step, these um, prompts are written out with a lot more words and I just shorthand them onto my page and then I go and um, try to make sense of it which is really fun. So instead of sticking twine on, because that gets a bit thick in my book, I grabbed this little bit of twine that was sitting on my desk and I put some of the black ink on my um, paper plate and I just dragged the, uh, the string through the ink and made some really cool lines, which I really like. So again, that's an interpretation. It said coloured string on twine and add to your page. I was adding it to the page, but I wasn't actually sticking the twine on. So again, just using up the black ink in that page. Sometimes they become a hot mess and they just get gessoed over anyway, but that one's starting to add some different layers. So again, that ink was quite thick when it was getting draped on, so good blast with a heat gun, a heat tool to get it dry. You can use a heat tool or you can use a hairdryer. The only thing with a hairdryer is it does put out air. So you just got to be careful that things don't go flying everywhere. So step five was one or two steampunk style, steampunk style focal images. So these butterflies and people are just downloads from the internet, just searched, just basically popped in, what do I pop in, um, collage sheets, mixed media collage sheets, and one of the sheets was a person with all these different heads and hats, and I printed these out quite a while ago, and I printed out the butterflies as well. I printed out a lot of these when my last printer, and I'm up for a new printer again, oh, I kill printers, um, when my last printer was on its last legs and I decided to just print loads and loads of pages to use up the ink that was in it. And some of them are not perfect, but they work really well, especially in that journal page when you've got to cut them up anyway. I've had two inkjet printers in the last probably four years and I'm upgrading to a laser printer. So excited. I've just got to save up a little bit more money um, to get one because I just kill the inkjet printers. I'm, they just... 
because I don't print every day, it's the inkjets with the the they get blocked and do all sorts of funky stuff. Okay, so moving on. Step six: headline, quote, or phrase. So I decided to grab these little um, alphabet stickers from, and I can't read who they're from. They come in a class kit quite a few years ago. So just some little block alphabet stickers to spell out. What have I spelt out? Spread your wings and fly. So they almost look like scrabble pieces because they've got little numbers on them as well. So they're kind of cute. And I do end up getting my knife. Um, any stickers that I put in my art journal, I do put matte medium under them and then over the top of them just to seal them in. Especially if you're sticking like these went over paint and a bit of ink. So the stickers aren't really going to stick. They're more designed to stick to paper, not to stick to mixed media. Um, so it's a bit of a tip if you are using stickers in your art journal to um, gel medium or gesso, um, not gel medium, or glue under them and then on top of them. So I do love the Liquitex gel matte medium for that. I just use my finger sometimes just to spray it over the top. And the added bonus sheet of that sticker sheet is as you see me pulling little um, letters off, you will see if I move the sheet up, I've taken some of it off the bottom, but it's actually got like a grid where all the stickers are punched out and you can see just right down the bottom it's missing. I've used a piece of it already. Like the sticker, what I call a sticker waste um, is good to use as well. So I incorporate that in some of my art journals as well. So nothing gets thrown out in the art journal world. We all get to use everything. So step seven. Oh, here comes the rain. wonder if you can hear it. So add metallic elements, paint, ink or foil. So I decided to grab some kindy glitz and I... I didn't really want to add a lot of glitter to it, but I decided to give it a little bit of glitter. So I added a bit of kindy glitz just to the wings of the butterflies, and they just twinkle as you um, sort of move the page. So kindy glitz, I think that's an Australian brand, and gee, I had that bottle when I had my shop about 10, 11 years ago. Oops. See, I'm trying to stop hoarding things and use things up. So eight was a frame or a border. So I decided it needed to frame, or your page needs a frame anyway, just to like contain it. So this is a Montana paint marker. I got this one in a class kit quite a few years ago, and it's a really thick one, and it comes out awesomely thick. So I'm just doing a haphazard, not a straight border. I didn't want it to be like a lined border, so just doing it um, very haphazardly, and just drying that off as well. So I love that Montana paint marker and I do want to track down some of those. Again, I believe you can get ones that are empty and you can fill them up. That one come pre-filled with black paint, but I believe you can get some that are empty and you can fill them up. I must invest in looking at those more. Then I decide just to go in with a little bit of defining the... Um, a lot of people do their defining around their collage images with a Stabilo pencil and then activate it with water and it looks awesome. It like fades out the shadow, but I don't have a Stabilo pencil yet. They're like hen's teeth in Australia. They're really, really hard to find. Um, and every time I think to go looking for them, I'm not in the right spot to get them. Um, I'm going to a huge craft show in August this year so with my business, so hopefully I'll remember to ask one of the other vendors to get them. Um, or to buy them. I did last year and by the time I remembered on day three they'd sold out. So just going around and just highlighting a bit with the it's just basically a black permanent marker. So I'll leave you with some still photos um, at the end of some close-ups. Thanks for watching and I'd love if you try a mission inspiration. Thank